Hi everyone, uh, my name is Mark Warney and I own and run DC Tours. Um, we're a, we run walking tours and study tours in Belfast and we're probably best known for our Troubles Tour, uh, which is an entirely neutral and unbiased two and a half hour experience in Belfast city centre, which explains the Troubles, but also the peace process. Um, Tourism and I asked me along to give you a little bit of background and insight into the way our company developed over time and the relationship we have both with Tourism NI and the Embrace the Giant Spirit program. Uh, and we are a classic micro business. It's just myself in the office and a small group of great tour guides who deliver public tours every day and also private tours for everyone from small exclusive clients to large groups. Uh, conferences, coach tours, and of course, schools and universities. Um, but as far as the management, the marketing, the social media, and the operations of the company goes, it's all just my responsibility. And so while I love being a tour guide, genuinely, I don't get that much time to do it myself anymore. Um, so we set up in early 2013, and at the start, it was just myself and an old friend of mine, Paul Donnelly. Uh, better known to practically everybody as Donzo. I'd read an article about dark tourism and it mentioned the recently opened Titanic building and it set me thinking about dark and conflict tourism in Belfast. And I did some research and discovered that while very few tourists said learning about the troubles was the number one reason for coming to Belfast, they had a natural curiosity if they'd grown up during the time and they wanted to make the most of their time here, were curious about it and wanted to learn about it. But their options to do this in Belfast were quite limited back then. Uh, and so I came up with the idea for a new walking tour with a really simple USP uh, to deliver an experience which allowed guests to learn about the troubles from a civilian perspective and from people who grew up in Belfast during that time. Um, and we were not going to do the murals or the peace walls. Instead, what we were going to do, we were going to take people to event sites in Belfast city centre. And um, these were locations that not only talked about events that happened in the early 1970s, but also sites that demonstrated the resilience and the regeneration in Belfast. We thought this was going to be the best way for us to help our guests really connect with the city, to understand a little more about what makes it and us unique and to make their trip more meaningful. And uh, here's one of our favorite reviews, which kind of gives you a little insight and reflects on what we're trying to do. Uh, little did we realize how this tour would help us leave two days later with the city having captured a place in our hearts. And that genuinely does make us feel warm and fuzzy inside whenever we get reviews like that. Um, but bear in mind, we had absolutely zero tourism and industry experience, absolutely none. I was working in the events industry. Paul was a politics and Irish history lecturer, uh, but he also worked in mediation and facilitation with victims and survivors groups and with interface communities. And thanks to the combination of all these skills, we were still confident of creating an excellent and an unbiased educational experience. And then we named the company Dead Center Tours. That's what the DC stands for. And it was referencing our neutrality, but also the fact that the city center was a ghost town for decades during the troubles. And then we called the tour a history of terror. You will not be surprised to learn that this went down like a lead balloon with both Visit Belfast and Tourism NI. Uh, and it is also safe to say that we approach the relationship with the tourism bodies a bit like a clown running through a minefield. We had an intention to have a fresh and direct approach and it really did ruffle quite a few feathers. And so for the next three or four years, we just bumped along as a part-time hobby job or a side hustle, just building slowly, organically through word of mouth, both on our daily tours and our study tours. When we first started out, all we did was get listed on TripAdvisor, make a three-page website, printed a few leaflets, and away we went. No online booking engine, but a lot of cold mornings stood in front of the city hall in the rain, just hoping somebody might show up and do the tour. And they did, but mostly just at the weekends. So it really was a part-time endeavor. 
But the tourism experience sector was becoming uh, much more online by around 2017 um, with the rise of the online travel agents. Uh, visitor behaviours we could see were starting to change and they were doing me more research before they travelled and many visitors were actually booking before they even left their home. Um, and so that meant that the need to capture bookings far in advance of the date of the tour uh, was meant that we had to be more accessible, more visible online. So what we did, we researched all the online booking platforms, we chose the one best suited to our structure and our price point, and we embedded it in the website. This allowed us to contract with the likes of Viator, Get Your Guide, Expedia, and away we went. We got busy and quickly realized this could be a full-time business, but we would need to really work at it to realize its potential, and we would need help. And we were fortunate to get an absolutely amazing mentor through a Belfast City Council business program, a man called Mark Alexander, who is sadly no longer with us, but he made a huge difference to our business. He helped us to establish trust and build our relationships with the tourism bodies and practically ordered us in a nice way to apply for the new Tourism NI quality grading scheme that was available at that time. And that really was the key to our new partnerships with Tourism NI and Visit Belfast. Tourism NI's assessors were brilliant. They didn't necessarily know a lot about our business or conflict tourism, but they knew their industry better than we did. And we got invaluable feedback on how to improve our tours and our business so that we could offer a tour which could compete with the very best urban walking tours around the world. We took their comments on board, made the improvements, devoted full-time hours. And then a random and amazing thing happened. At the start of 2018, we were invited to take part in a podcast being recorded in Belfast. Some of you may know who this is. This was the first live podcast recorded by this man, Blind Boy Boat Club. I only knew him as part of a limerick comedy and music act, The Rubber Bandits, but it turned out that he has a worldwide audience of hundreds of thousands for his podcasts on everything from culture, history, politics, right through to mental health. How it happened was that Blind Boy asked his Twitter following who he should interview in Belfast, who knew a bit about the history and was a bit of crack, and Twitter came back and said he should talk to Donzo. So Paul does a 90 minute interview with Blind Boy about all things Belfast in front of an audience, audience of a few hundred people in the Duncairn Arts Centre on a Friday night. It goes out a couple of weeks later and it is a massive hit. Soon we had so many guests appearing on tours, both from Ireland and across the world. No joke, from Japan to Brazil, we had people appearing on tours who said they had heard about us on that podcast. And you cannot make stuff like this happen, but you can absolutely seize an opportunity when it appears. And to this day, we still have guests coming on the tour because of a podcast over five and a half years ago. And we still have links on it on our website if it piqued your interest and you want to listen to it. But do be aware, there is swearing. Okay. <laughs> Basically, we became an overnight success. It just took us five years of hard work to get to the night in question. By 2019, we were genuinely flying. We were named one of the top four experiences in the UK by TripAdvisor. Paul was named the UK's top tour guide at the Wanderlust World Guide Awards. Uh, you can see him here on the extreme left. We didn't allow him to take a flag. And um, we nearly won the most authentic NI experience at the Tourism NI Awards. Thank you. <laughs> we also commissioned our own piece of street art uh, just for a bit of fun. It's called Belfast Romances and it sits on the back of the Bullet Hotel in Victoria Street. And it even made a fleeting appearance in the last episode of Line of Duty. And again, that went back out on blogs and uh, websites every opportunity we get. We brought in more guides. We were all set for another fantastic year in 2020. We had, in fact, just signed up for the second tranche of Embrace the Giant Spirit in the spring of that year when the pandemic hit. Um, and so we shut down on St. Patrick's Day. I spent the weekend drinking whiskey, feeling sorry for myself, but the following week I started work again. Um, we used time in lockdown to fully engage with everyone we could, remotely of course, uh, learning from all the advice, implementing what we felt was relevant to us, and taking advantage of literally every online course, virtual meeting, and piece of research available. We invested both time and money. 
refreshing our website and committing to really learning and implementing search engine optimization, which I know is a dirty word, guys, but it really worked. Um, to keep the guides on board, we launched virtual tours, basically glorified Zooms, um, and we also created our very own app with a range of free and premium self-guided audio tours. Then we started building a new live tour targeted at the domestic market, which we clearly returned first because international tourism was wrecked. A nice, friendly, upbeat, essential tour, which we called the best of Belfast because selling troubles tours to locals, that's a really tough gig. Basically, until, until international tourism returned, we had to adapt. We also prepared for international visitors and pent up demand by developing a proper marketing plan for the first time and gaining various accreditations. Green Tourism Silver Award, Gold Level Innovator Award, and thanks to our development of the self-guided audio tours, we were also awarded a Connected Places Catapult grant to develop an immersive self-guided video tour. Some projects worked well, some didn't, but we focused on what worked best, and we also leveraged the support and the insights coming out of Tourism NI and the Embrace the Giant Spirit team. And when we properly reopened in 2022, we absolutely flew. The start of the year also saw um, the launch of Branagh's film Belfast, and we were asked to appear on BBC Breakfast and BBC Worldwide to talk about it, all because of the social media presence we were maintaining. And of course, that led to a lot of inquiries, not least whenever we re-promoted the interview ourselves through blogs and the website. By the end of 2022, we had achieved 150% turnover of 2019. And this was whenever tourism in 2022 was expected to rebound 74%. 2023 is on track to be 150% of 2022. And while we are a small business, we are also data-driven. Google Analytics is a powerful tool once we learn the statistics to focus on and how to build reports. Those reports help us to develop future trend predictions and set realistic and achievable targets. To me, the difference between now and 10 years ago is that as well as being an expert in our experience, we now need to be experts in online advertising and marketing if we're really going to make it a total success. There's an old adage, half of my advertising works brilliantly, the other half not so much. If I just knew which half, I could save a fortune. <laughs> Tourism and I and Embrace the Giant Spirit have absolutely given us the toolkit to help us do this. They've helped us master marketing and provided a wide range of business support. But they don't do it for you. It's for us alone to decide what to focus on, but with the toolkit, it helps us make more informed decisions on the directions we want to take. It sounds simple, but one of the best performing socials we use is the re-promotion of feedback and reviews. Word of mouth is a huge resource. Using social media posts to amplify that is a great and a free way of doing that. And of course, we use feedback to develop and hone the content of our tours too. Over time, we realized how interested guests were in the peace process, and so we increased our focus on that. We also see how much our guests appreciate and want to share in the cautious optimism we have for the future. So we always try to end the tours on a positive note. You read our reviews, you see this message of hope coming through in every, and a lot of them. Another important element of the Embrace the Giant Spirit onboarding process for us was the experience review. This is nearly as detailed as the Tourism NI quality grading review we have been doing for the last few years. And it was genuinely incredibly useful in helping us fine tune the tours to enhance them even more. Having the quality of, and the confidence in those reviews helps us actually go out and punt for awards, aim high. Because if you have awards on your leaflets, on your, your website, that's your demarcation. That's your differentiator between everybody else. For us, I can say the, the program has been a massive benefit and it absolutely helped us find shortcuts to success. Uh, keep this one short and sweet, folks. Uh, I'm gonna stop now, but I have a couple of minutes left, I think, still. So if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to, to take them on board if I've piqued any interest. Stun sign. I am, I'm also standing around for lunch, guys. So uh, if you wanna grab me over lunch and have a chat, more than happy to. Folks, thank you very much.